dwarfs once ruled a mighty empire that spanned the world's edge mountains and far to the north and the south as well as much of the lands that is today the empire. The dwarf empire was beset by countless invasions and natural disasters. Their civilization has been reduced to a pale shadow of its former self. Nonetheless, the dwarfs fight a determined, never-ending defense of their besieged realm in the hopes of one day reclaiming what was lost. A key part of this struggle are the dwarven Karaks, a word that in dwarven can mean endurance, fortress and everlasting, an apt description of this proud and ancient race. Karak is also a general term for the massive fortress complexes built by the dwarfs and their ancestor gods. These holdfasts are the beating heart of dwarven civilization. Karaks vary wildly in size, power and depth, but generally contain everything the dwarves need including breweries, granaries, forges, mines, armories, living spaces, farms and government offices. Each hold is ruled by its own dwarf king, who owes fealty to the High King, the Lord of Karas Akarak. While the majority of dwarven infrastructure is buried deep within the mountains, the first thing a traveller, or indeed invading army, will encounter is their outside holdings. These include fairly unimposing farms, grazing grounds, and goat herding stations, which help feed the dwarven population. Scattered structures such as breweries, mines, trading posts, lookout towers and ranger stations also hint at the presence of nearby halls, but it is the site of impressive bastions, walls, gatehouses and sky bridges which clearly betrays the location of a Karak. However, by the time anyone even approaches a Karak, the dwarves will already be well aware of their presence. Patrols keep round-the-clock watch of Dwarven territory and can easily relay warnings and messages from one end of the realm to the other using bonfire signals as well as aerial transport and gyrocopters. Additionally, an extensive network of underground passages allows Dwarven intelligence and troops to quickly travel from point A to point B through otherwise impassable mountain terrain. In the face of a threat, these tunnels become highways for the invisible redeployment of infantry and artillery. All of these things combined makes it nearly impossible to catch dwarves by surprise in a direct assault. Anyone foolhardy enough to try will encounter massive walls, heavily fortified gates and narrow bridges, all built so as to take advantage of the natural strength of the mountains. Larger holds boast multiple outer layers of walled fortifications and armoured gatehouses, each level defended by stout dwarven warriors and war machines. The only way into a Karak will be through this carefully constructed killing field. By design, only a tiny portion of a dwarven fortress is vulnerable to attack from above ground. The majority of a Karak, much like an iceberg, is hidden out of sight. It is beneath the mountains that the efforts of countless dwarven generations has been spent. Sprawling below, one will find many miles of tunnels, halls and chambers which spread out in all directions with little standardization from hold to hold. Generally speaking though, a Karak is roughly divided into a series of descending levels called the Deeps. Each level is connected by a series of stairways and tunnels for access on foot, while carefully engineered shafts help bring in air and light from the surface. The top level is referred to as Upper Deep and serves as the welcome mat for visitors and attackers alike. It is largely made up of entrance halls, audience chambers, barracks and gyrocopter landing pads. The next level is called the Middle Deeps and is the equivalent of the city centre in a human settlement. This level bustles with activity related to the Great Hall, the guild halls, distilleries, kitchens, pantries, feasting halls, drinking halls and drinking lodges. 
Deeper down, we find more prestigious areas like the Royal Clan Halls, jewel smithing shops, libraries, counting rooms, foundries, workshops, and powder rooms. The facilities present within a Karak depends highly on the resources available. For example, a Karak with access to rich deposits of metal will have a high number of forges used to produce various metal tools, arms, and armor. A hold rich in more exotic materials might concentrate on creating magical artifacts, and would probably include many runic workshops and altars. Alternatively, a Karak could simply be a primary producer of coal, and so dedicate most of its infrastructure to the mining, refining, and selling of this fuel source. At the furthest depths of a Karak is the Underdeep. Here, mining operations continuously dig ever deeper and search for more precious resources. Over time, mineral veins are exhausted and large portions of this level fall into disuse. From here, the famous underways once linked great dwarven cities, but they too have now largely been abandoned. Far from the surface and the flickering lights of bear holes, the Underdeep has become a dangerous place, frequently overrun with skaven, goblins, orcs, and all manners of nasty beasties, constantly threatening to break in in the upper levels of the Quran. It is here that iron breakers and fire drakes mount their bloody defense of the dwarven Karaks against all the forces of the deeper, darker earth. Karaz Akarak, the Everpeak, is the capital of the Dwarf Realm and the seat of High King Thorgrim Grudgebearer. It stands as the oldest, largest, and mightiest of halls, having never fallen to an enemy invader. Home to the Great Vault, Karaz Akarak safeguards many treasures, including the Phoenix Crown taken from the High Elves during the War of Vengeance, the Crystal of Fire, and the great Book of Grudges. This jewel of a once mighty empire is to the dwarfs what Constantinople was to the Eastern Roman Empire. Karak Kadrin, or Slayer Keep, is the home of the famous Slayer Cult. These warriors seek a glorious death in combat to atone for their wrongdoings, and have flocked to this stronghold which sits directly atop a major invasion route. The reigning monarch, Ungrim Ironfist, has himself taken the oath and become the first and only Slayer King. As such, the fortress is fiercely defended and has never fallen. While the most famous of Karaks have withstood the test of time, the enemy has not been held off on all fronts. During the War of Vengeance, for instance, the High Elves managed to break open the sea hold of Barak Var by employing enslaved sea serpents. But even this attack was repulsed before breaching even the upper levels. Such direct assaults from the front are unlikely to meet success unless pursued with incredible numbers and a great amount of determination and ferocity, as was seen with Erkrum, which fell to an orc warg after a lengthy siege. Most halls have fallen due to attacks from below, or have had to be abandoned due to some natural or unnatural disaster. The second largest of the dwarf halls fell from a combination of such factors. Karak Eight Peaks was rocked by a series of volcanic eruptions which devastated its above-ground food supplies. In quick succession, the fortress was set upon by hordes of skaven orcs and goblins from both above and below. The Karak's defenders mounted a stubborn and lengthy defense, however, the fortifications had never been designed to repulse attacks of this magnitude, and after centuries of warring against the High Elves, was dangerously under strength. The numbers of the invaders seemed limitless, and their brutal attacks employed horrifying new weapons developed specifically for tunnel fighting, including poison gas, and they also resorted to poisoning water supplies. 
Finally, the remaining dwarves were forced to abandon the fortress, sealing off the tombs and treasure vaults before attempting to break out onto the surface and make the long trek to other dwarven halls. Many never made it. However, dwarves are stubborn creatures and hate to give up what is theirs. The loss of Karak Eight Peaks was particularly heartbreaking and many attempts have been made both by humans and dwarves to retake the hold, or at the very least reclaim some of its riches. To date, the most successful attempt has been made by Belagar, a descendant of the dethroned ruling clan of Karak Eight Peaks. Himself, along with a small enclave of dwarves and a few humans, have managed to establish themselves in fortified strongholds on the surface. And from there they have started to slowly but surely expand into the upper reaches of the Hold, establishing new fortifications as they go and sealing off the tunnels used by the Grobi and the Skaven. Whether this expedition will meet with success or be driven off like all the others, only time can tell.